Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. I first met Johnny and Linda Key at the 2019 Wagons for Warriors Chuck Wagon Festival in Lebanon, Missouri, where they were fixing dinner on traditional cast iron cookware for hundreds of festival goers. They mentioned they did some gardening and put up their produce using mostly conventional canning methods. I kept that in the back of my mind so the next time I was passing through Arkansas, I might drop by to take a look. Well, here's the first of what is sure to be many episodes on the Keys' gardening and preserving work. They managed to produce and preserve a tremendous amount of vegetables and fruits on their place, only to give most of it away to local families and charities. A retired horseshoer and former oxen teamster, Johnny has quit the competitive chuck wagon circuit he dominated for several years and now just cooks for fundraising and church events in his area. In this episode, Johnny shows us how he prepares a seed bed and plants bush beans. In later shows, we'll talk about some of the other crops he and Linda put up, including spinach, tomatoes, strawberries, and lots more. We have a section that is unplanted. It was a little wet yesterday, so I ran a plow through it so it could dry. We're going to go out and disc it up, and then we're going to uh, run the middles and bed it up, and then dress those beds into a pretty seed bed. Then we're going to hook to the planter and select a proper plate for the beans we're going to plant, spacing and we're going to plant it today. In the fall, I hauled 15 yards of compost into this one section, along with uh, about 3,000 pounds of chicken litter and about 1,500 pounds of lime and spread on all of it and then took a flat bottom breaking plow and turned it under about eight inches deep to uh, cure for the winter and, and disperse and spread. So now we should have a good seed bed. I'm going to double disc it by overlapping. So it'll be two, two layers of disking all at once. By backing as I raise my disc, I don't leave a big pile of dirt at the end. It keeps it a little more level. Notice the lack of a GPS system. It's a country boy GPS. You pick out a fence post at the other end of the field. And with this little tractor, when I'm bedding, it pulls the tractor a little. So I have longer rows than most folks. They're a little crooked. <laughs> but I think this dirt worked up really well. Sure did. Yeah. Uh, 
we'll bed that up and then that system seems to work for me in this soil uh, is adding the uh, compost and the that's a little bit, that's a little bit of the compost we yeah. dug up correct yeah. it didn't have time to break down well, I try to do it every other year uh, I, I, maybe I should do it every year I don't know but it works for me yeah. we don't use commercial fertilizer or poison and that's why we're doing this because we think we're getting better food right you know it yep. uh, financially the money wise you're better off to go buy a can of beans but you know you don't know what you're getting and and it's satisfying i love to watch it grow i love for <laughs> i guess it's a little boastful I, I love for people to be envious of how well it's doing it just makes me proud. And, uh, Linda bought the little tractor for a lawnmower several years ago, and I started building little implements, and I'm having fun playing. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's How much of this did John Deere build and how much did uh, Johnny build? This particular disc, I took a horse-drawn disc like that yellow one there, and I took the two axles out from underneath it and I built everything else. I just welded up a frame and set my axles. Uh, guessed at the uh, pitch of the blades and someone was taking care of me when, they, when I did because it came out really well. By it all being small scale, makes it pretty easy to hook and unhook. I have forgot to tighten these stabilizers, and when I do, it goes wild. Okay, we're ready to go bed up. As I mentioned before, this little tractor, those plows will pull it around, so I'll really just initially mark it, then we'll go back and drop it and go.
spend about as much time changing implements as you do working, but I get to play. Did you build this most yourself? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen anyone using that combination, but... And it wasn't perfect the first time I hooked to it. I had to do a little modification, but... You ever have to put cinder blocks on it? You got that uh, concrete weight? I anticipated doing it, but I don't. Yeah, it works really well. <coughs> if you were using it for what it was made for, to bust up the ground after the plant has emerged as a whole, you probably would. But uh, it's loose enough that it works. Yeah, good. it it. It buries almost up to the axle like yeah. it is yeah. and helps fluff that ground enough that the it's seed and the bed. root can spread and yeah. I, I like it. There's an extra piece there that you don't normally see on a planter, but that has a story here too. I've got little plates that will plant cucumber seeds, 16 or 24 or whatever I choose, but you have to have enough seed to cover the bottom of the hopper for it to work properly. And a lot of times when we're just planting one row of cucumbers, you just have a little handful of seed I take the hopper off and set that seat on there and I put a funnel in the throat. Linda sits here on a seat with her feet on the bar and I'll pull up two foot and she'll drop two seeds. I'll pull up two foot and she'll drop two seeds. Perfect. <laughs> and this come off of uh, how many? I think the gentleman had an eight row and uh, like I told you once before I think uh, he had a hired hand planting and he turned a corner and hit a tree with a long bar on an eight row tore up three of the units and it was an outdated planter and he just parked it in the fence row and went and got a new planter Several years later, a buddy of mine saw it over there, and he wanted a two-row planter for his garden. He asked the gentleman, could he buy two, two units off of that planter? There were five left good. And he told him, no, sir, you can't buy two units to build your 
two row in your garden, but come get four and build two of them, I'll accept one and you keep one and you got it without buying it. So that happened. I took the giant hopper that was on a farm planter off and luckily enough the bucket had the same diameter so it worked out perfect to have a little smaller hopper. Now we're planting beans and here are two bean plates. One of them will drop it every six inches. One will drop it every eight and a half. So I think I'd rather have those a little closer. I took a bunch of corn plates, like for cucumbers and squash that drops every 25 and a half. I used Bondo body filler yep. to stop up and uh, then this one drops it. 17 inches so it it adapts really well and works good yeah that's that's awesome now these have two sides one away from the seed and one next to the seed now that little got to fit in those plates and give it a chance to seat before you screw it down or you break the plate okay. and now it's turning the plate yeah. the gear ratio it's got different gear ratios and different chain link I'm I've got the book on it but I didn't try to figure all that out I set it down on the ground and I marked the plate and I eased forward until it made one revolution and it was 17 foot 2 inches. So uh, I would just divide the number of holes, multiplied 17 2 times 12, divide the number of holes in that and it told me what the drop was. And I skipped a row on either side of the tomatoes and it turned out we have six plantable rows. So I'm going to plant three rows of green beans and three rows of horticulture beans. And that ought to be enough. And so we're going to plant those three rows, come back, change to a different bean, which will take the same plate. We'll plant those and uh, wait on July. And I know you can pull a planter fast, but this is an enjoyable part. I go slow and enjoy it. It doesn't last long.
Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.